Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Megan Remedy and today's video is going to be a eczema protocol. exact um, numbers for the supplements because it's going to vary person to person so keep that in mind that this is a general overview if you would like a personalized protocol that includes food supplements and lifestyle then you can contact me through my email or through my website. I'm going to leave the links below for that. So this is going to be just a general guide, but if you need extra help, you can contact me for a consultation. So I suffered with eczema my whole life. I would have bouts of it um, as a baby, as a young child, and throughout my teenage years and then I had a breakout when I was an adult when I thought I had it under control so fast forward to me being an adult the picture that you've seen in the thumbnail um, I'll put it up here for you guys again so you can see that was a breakout that I had on my hand now I was very prone to breakouts on my arms and my hands and that was probably one of the worst breakouts that I've had in a long time. So when I was a teenager, I cut out dairy and I really didn't have a problem with eczema. Once I cut out dairy, um, but then I started to have another breakout as an adult. This video is my top tips on how I healed my eczema, how you can heal your eczema. It is in a practical, digestible manner. I'm going to put the slides up as I go, but right now I'm reading off of my PowerPoint presentation. And if you guys have any other questions, you can leave those in the comments below. I'm happy to help. I know how hard it is to struggle with skin conditions. These tips could also help for psoriasis. They are very similar in the fact that they are inflammatory and they are autoimmune conditions. So let's get started on my top tips for healing eczema. Foods to avoid. Now, anything causing inflammation, and this can be personalized. Some people are allergic to foods that other people aren't. So if you are very allergic to certain foods, you definitely want to cut those out of the diet because they will cause inflammation in the digestive system and essentially not allow your digestive system to heal to get rid of the eczema. Um, processed foods. So I know a lot of people love their processed snacks, but this is very detrimental to your overall health and you will not be able to heal your digestive system if you keep consuming these processed, highly inflammatory foods. The key to healing eczema is to heal your digestive system. So anybody with any kind of autoimmune condition, skin condition, your digestive system is in turmoil you most likely have leaky gut you most likely have other digestive issues going on you may have candida you may have h pylori etc so you definitely want to focus on healing the gut to heal eczema um, so chemical foods food coloring preservatives packaged foods all of these foods are definitely going to cause inflammation also sugar and its derivatives, corn syrup is one of the most horrible things that you could put into your body. I'm going to do another video on corn syrup alone, but any of these artificial sugars, artificial sweeteners, um, sugar concentrates, you definitely want to stay away from these. Now if you need a little bit of sweet in your coffee or in a recipe that you're using, I would advise honey or maple syrup and make sure that you are getting your honey or maple syrup 
from a trusted source because there are a lot of scams out there for cheap honey companies and cheap maple syrup companies where it is essentially just corn syrup not authentic honey or maple syrup um now keep in mind that you would still have to keep this to a minimal but it's definitely an option when you want a little bit of a natural sweetness in some type of recipe so I would definitely exclude all grains and gluten especially this is very inflammatory to the gut um, even if you do not have a gluten allergy I still suggest this because it's just not beneficial to overall health now every once in a while if you do want some bread I would suggest that you look into naturally fermented sourdough bread um, because this greatly reduces the inflammatory effects of grains or gluten. Moving on to nightshades, they cause a lot of inflammation in a lot of people. So um, foods such as tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, etc. You can Google other nightshades if you're curious. These foods definitely cause inflammatory reactions in a lot of people, um, especially arthritis and eczema. So nuts and seeds, especially peanut butter. Peanut butter tends to be very inflammatory because it naturally holds onto mold. There's a natural mold that grows on peanuts, so it's very unavoidable. Um, and nuts and seeds are harder to digest. They come with anti-nutrients that can destroy the gut lining. So when you are trying to heal the gut lining, it's a good idea to stay away from these foods. Not to say you can never have, you know, a little bit of peanut butter or nut butter again in your life, but during the healing process, we want to create the most effective environment for gut healing, and that includes eliminating all triggers for um, any type of leaky gut situation. Um, so I would definitely avoid conventional dairy. Um, it's going to cause a lot of inf inflammation. Pasteurized dairy is never a good idea. It is completely destroyed and void of nutrients from the process of milking the cow all the way up to the process of when it gets to the store. It's just not a health promoting food. Now, through the healing process, I would eliminate all dairy. Once you heal the gut, you can reintroduce, if you're not lactose intolerant or allergic, you can reintroduce raw dairy if you can get it in your area, like kefir and yogurt. And this is actually going to help build up the good bacteria in your digestive system. But if you cannot get your hands on good quality dairy, I would just exclude it completely because there is no benefit to conventional dairy. also conventional meat so these animals are fed a lot of allergens that people um, have allergies to or that are highly inflammatory so they are fed wheat they're fed soy grains and often they are genetically modified animals themselves so this is going to increase the omega-6 content in the animal this is going to increase the inflammatory markers in the animal and essentially not be a healthful food to consume so whatever the animal eats is what you are eating so when they feed these animals a very synthetic grain based synthetic vitamin diet along with the horrible conditions that they're in a lot of these animals have cancer have health issues have systemic inflammation are treated horrible their whole life they are going to be a sick animal and a sick animal is going to in turn make you sick so we definitely want to try and avoid conventional meat as much as possible. Try and search out better options at local farms. Utilize Google. Utilize Facebook groups. Um, see if there's any local hunters in your area. Trusted quality butchers and small farms that you can support where you can actually go and see that the living conditions and what they feed the animals are quality. 
So conventional eggs, the same thing goes for conventional eggs. The chickens are fed GMO products as well, essentially making their meat or their eggs not a healthful food. So um, the conditions that they're in as well are absolutely horrible. I would definitely try to seek out backyard eggs or pasture raised eggs and you will be able to notice the difference in quality by the color of the yolk. So a lot of grocery store yolks, it's a very pale yellow color. Um, this is lacking nutrients. If the yolk is a darker, deeper orange color, it is richer and the consistency of the egg is thicker, then this is definitely a healthier choice. Now, if the chicken is fed these allergens that you have an allergy to, essentially you are going to react to the egg. It's not necessarily that you have an allergy to an egg, which some people do have egg allergies, but in a lot of the cases, the allergy is to what they are feeding the chicken. Um, those substances are going to be found in its meat and in its eggs. And moving on to water, so definitely avoid tap water and try to get a shower filter. The tap water in most places contains chlorine, contains traces of medicines, contains fluoride. All of this is going to lead to gut dysbiosis and essentially aggravate your eczema and not allow your gut to heal. Now, in the shower, when these chlorine, the chlorine and these chemicals are hitting the skin that is affected, is essentially going to um, halt the healing process because your skin is taking on chemicals every single time you shower. Um, we want to create a healing environment for the eczema internally and externally and I'll get to that later on in the video. So now um, consider this about eczema medications because a lot of doctors will tell you that you cannot heal eczema naturally, that you're going to have it for the rest of your life, um, it's genetic, yada yada, um, not true at all, you can heal your eczema naturally. So steroid cream effects. Um, I was on steroid cream when I was younger and it actually thinned my skin to the point where my arms do not tan like the rest of my body. Um, even my hands, as you can see, it's a lot more paler. Um, this is because the skin was damaged by steroid cream. So um, Cushing syndrome is definitely a concern with steroid cream, skin thinning, hormonal changes, PMS, dizziness, headaches, stretch marks induced by steroid cream, blistering of the skin, some people are allergic, insomnia, blurred vision, weight gain, puffy face, uneven heartbeats, etc. If you're curious, you can do a little bit more research on how bad steroid creams are for you. And then we also have immunosuppressant drugs. Um, these are usually oral drugs given for eczema. And they increase the risk of infections internally and externally, gastrointestinal issues, increased blood pressure, increased risk of cancers, increased risk of liver and kidney damage, hair loss, stunted growth, osteoporosis, etc. And you can also look into more of that if you're curious. Quick Google search and you'll be able to see the side effects. And also these side effects are labeled on the drug information insert of these medications. But not a lot of people look into that or read that. They just trust that the doctor knows best. So foods to include that would be the most beneficial for eczema healing. We have bone broth. So um, I included shark cartilage broth in this as well because it's very similar. Um, so the collagen and minerals in bone broth help to nourish and repair the integrity of the digestive lining and repair skin cells. This is very important focus in calming autoimmune flare-ups. Next we have fermented vegetables, foods, and drinks. 
So sauerkraut, kimchi, coconut or dairy kefir, raw grass-fed yogurt. Um, these are all sources of natural probiotics. So we definitely want to replenish the good bacteria when our digestive system is struggling or if there is any type of overgrowth of bad bacteria. Now there's a specific protocol to gut healing, but these are just general guidelines for you guys to increase your nutritional value in your diet and your good and the value of good bacteria that's coming into the digestive system. Um, so probiotic bacteria can help to restore more optimal and balanced microflora within the digestive system in turn improving immune function and healthy reactivity so grass-fed meats so quality protein for tissue repair um, and grass-fed meats are all, are also low in inflammatory omega-6 whereas non-grass-fed meat is higher in omega-6 and is higher in inflammatory markers so land bearing animals are the highest quality protein if you want to check out more about this concept, you can look into Gabrielle Lyon. I will link her website below for you guys. She focuses on muscle-centric medicine and a lot of her protein research is amazing and it makes so much sense. After my experience with the vegan diet and how detrimental it was to my health, I understand the importance of land-based protein or animal-based protein. Next we have organ meats. So organ meats are full of various nutrients and DNA that can help to restore damaged organs, therefore leading to a more healthy and balanced immune system. Fish, fish are natural sources of omega-3 fatty acids, a nutrient that can lower inflammation naturally. As in the case with autoimmune conditions, inflammation is almost always a factor that feeds the cycle of flare-ups. Shellfish contain high amounts of minerals needed for bodily function and cellular repair. So in order for the skin to actually repair itself, you need an influx of easily digestible amino acids and fatty acids that are of high quality. Next we have pasture raised eggs, so quality protein and fat um, is necessary for tissue repair. Also, um, consider a clean version of the keto diet. It helps to heal digestion and eliminate fungal overgrowth. So usually with um, eczema cases, we see that there is a systemic fungal overgrowth in the body. So supplements to include or consider. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, keep in mind that these are just suggestions if you would like a customized eczema protocol or a customized protocol to heal your specific issues with specific amounts when to take them um, times of day the time of day to take them what to take them with and what not to take them with then you can book a consultation through my website the link will be in the description but this is just for educational purposes um, only so I did not include exact amounts. I'm just telling you what, telling you guys what supplements would benefit or what supplements you can further look into. So the first one we have is betaine HCL, so hydrochloric acid. So often stomach acid is low with autoimmune conditions and dermatitis, um, leading to dysbiosis, malabsorption, etc. So it is very key to check to see if your stomach acid is low and to correct that once you supplement with hydrochloric acid your body will be able to start digesting the protein and in turn using the protein to heal your stomach heal your skin and this will be a cascading effect that will eventually lead to your body producing the correct amount of hydrochloric acid as your natural stomach acid increases you can decrease the amount of stomach acid pills that you are taking this will also go for bile, so um, especially people who are transitioning from a plant-based diet to a more animal-based diet. A lot of the times their hydrochloric acid and their bile is very low. So you can maybe also consider taking bile as well to help your digestion if you're noticing that you are not digesting fat. 
and I am going to do a video on how you know if you're digesting fat or not properly. This is going to be by the consistency and the look of your poop. So stay tuned for my poop video. When I do make it, I'll come back to this video and link it in the description. Next, we have cod liver oil. So cod liver oil contains high amounts of vitamin D3 and retinol to help heal the skin as well as, an, as, well as anti-inflammatory omega-3s that lubricate the skin. Quality fat and protein is essential to any kind of tissue repair. Next we have MSM. It reduces inflammation and contains a natural analgesic. Active B complex. So B vitamin deficiency has been linked to many skin conditions um, and active B vitamins aid in the reproduction of healthy skin cells. Um, next is biotin. So deficiency has been linked to dermatitis, a deficiency in biotin. Now you can consume all of these nutrients through food or you can boost your intake through supplements as well next we have whole food vitamin C so you don't want the derivative you want a whole food vitamin C and it aids in tissue repair antioxidants inhibits inflammation state and stabilizes cell membranes um, vitamin E relieves itching and dryness. Zinc aids in healing and optimizes immune function. Bee pollen, if your eczema is accompanied by allergies, you would benefit from bee pollen. Coenzyme Q10 removes toxins from the body, boosts immune system, and improves cellular energy. Freeform amino acids, um, a formula that combines both essential and non-essential amino acids to supply the body with protein important for construction and repair of all tissues. I wanna focus on a brand that has both essential and non-essential amino acids because when your body has a lot of repair to do, it is most beneficial to offer it all amino acids so that it can take those from digestion and utilize them within the body and it doesn't have an extra metabolic step of converting amino acids when it's already struggling to keep the body in homeostasis as it is. Next we have quality human strain probiotics so this prevents overgrowth of bad bacteria within the body and digestive system. Now I say human strain probiotic because a lot of the cheap probiotics on the market one, do not work, and two, they take these probiotics, they culture them from rat poop or other disgusting methods. So you want to make sure that you get a very good quality, reliable, ethical form of probiotics. Now, most of the time, these are gonna be professional lines of probiotics that a functional medicine practitioner, naturopath, or functional nutritional practitioner that has access to and would use. So I always have a link in my health video descriptions to professional supplement lines. If you can't get them in your area, if you don't have a health food store in your area that carries professional supplement lines. So all you have to do is sign up with your name and your email and you will have full access to professional lines of supplements. You um, don't have to buy anything. You can just sign up and browse. There is no fee whatsoever. Um, and this is a site that I use to send recommendations of different um, supplements to clients. It is very easy to use. So. If you're interested in something like that, definitely check that out in the description below. Um, next, we have shark cartilage. So this has been shown to reduce inflammation in eczema and help repair the tissue and the digestive system. Okay, so herbs to include. This is going to depend on the person, the situation. Um, definitely contact a professional that has been trained in herbs so that you can make sure that you're using herbs safely because they are definitely a natural medicine and can be used wrong and cause harm if they are used wrong. So I wanna stress that. Um, 
but herbs that can help are wild oil of oregano, black thorn, blueberry leaf, hawthorn berry, chamomile, dandelion, golden seal, and golden seal should definitely not be used for more than a week. It is a very strong herb. We have myrrh, pow darko, red clover, go-to cola, grapeseed extract, tea tree oil externally. Make sure that you do your research or contact a professional before you use these herbs or supplements just to make sure that um, you don't have any complications. And now if you are on any medications, herbs and supplements can interact with them. So once again, you would have to contact a professional to make sure that you don't have any contraindications going on with your regimen. Now, I would consider a complete specialized gut healing protocol if you have severe eczema or if any other conditions are present along with your eczema. This can make things a little bit more complicated and your healing process will be a lot more um, pleasant of an experience if you contact a professional any sort of bumps in the road that come along, um, any supplements that are not really working for you, any questions you have, all these kinks can be worked out by a professional health practitioner like myself. So definitely consider that in your healing journey. Now I say this because there is a five step process in functional nutrition that is essential to restoring digestive health so any condition that stems off of digestive imbalance, which is most conditions, would benefit from this type of rebalancing program. So that is remove, replace, re-inoculate, repair, and rebalance. Now remove, so you would remove stressors in the diet, you would remove any parasites, any bacteria, yeast, H. pylori, allergens, etc. You would remove all these damaging aspects to the body. And then two, we have replace. So if your hydrochloric acid is low, if your bile is low, vitamins and minerals and nutrients are missing, you would definitely replace these to speed along your healing. And then we have re-inoculate. So after you kill the bad bacteria, um, parasites, all of that that's going on, you would re-inoculate with good bacteria, probiotics, and prebiotics. Number four is repair. So repair the lining of the GI tract and spe with specific nutrients. So a lot of the times with leaky gut, um, the digestive lining is damaged. This is going to affect the absorption of nutrients, the digestion of digestion of nutrients. So you definitely want to consume specific nutrients to repair this lining. And then we have rebalance. So lifestyle choices, keeping the immune system and nervous system in balance. So this is just a maintenance step for after the protocol that you want to make sure you are not um, participating in any activities that will bring you back to having to go to step one. Now lifestyle tips for eczema would be red light sauna therapy, stress reduction, avoid chemical lotions and products that come in contact with the skin, including laundry detergent. So a lot of the times these external chemicals are really um, causing a reaction on the skin surface. So sometimes eczema can be coming from the inside, sometimes it can be coming from the outside, and sometimes it can be a combination of both. It just depends on your specific situation avoid indoor air pollutants like Febreze, etc. These are all going to irritate the skin and add to your toxic load, um, add to the liver's job. The liver is already trying to heal things internally, so you don't want to tax it more by external pollutants. You can use natural oils and creams topically. The next slide, I'm going to show you guys my favorite cream to use for any type of irritated skin condition, eczema, psoriasis, rashes, etc. Um, I would get plenty of natural sunlight. This is going to help heal the skin 
um, bring some natural vitamin D into the body. I would get a shower filter and or tap filters. Um, you want to definitely avoid chlorinated water, chlorinated pools, hot tubs, etc. And consider a humidifier to help moisten the skin and an essential oil diffuser to help get some medicinal oils throughout the air to help heal those um, lesions while you are sleeping or in the house. So this neem cream that I used to heal my eczema was a lifesaver. It is so soothing and all the ingredients in it are natural. It definitely... Um, it took away the itch, it took away the pain, and it healed my eczema very fast. And this is Neem Cream by um, a company called Thera Neem Naturals. It is amazing. I'm not sponsored, guys. This is just my favorite cream. Um, so the benefits of Neem Cream, it has vitamin E, fatty acids, it's anti-inflammatory, it's an analgesic, so it'll help with the pain, antifungal, antibacterial, very soothing, and helps heal the scars that are actually left behind by having very deep um, eczema wounds. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope these tips help you heal your eczema. If I missed anything, make sure to leave it in the comments below. If you have any tips or tricks that have helped you, leave those in the comments below. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If this video helped you, make sure you hit the like button and make sure you share it with anyone else. It would help. I really want to get the word out so that nobody else has to suffer with painful eczema. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Oh,